بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم ولعن أعداءهم In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, hello dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope if all of you are doing well and inshallah ready to spend another time, another 45 minutes with Imam Hussain alayhi salam knowing and getting more information about Ahl al-Bayt salawatullahi wa salam alayhi ajma'in through the most comprehensive form of ziyarah through the ziyarah and jama'ah and inshallah from this great place from land of Hussein, from land of Abbas we are sending our salam to you respected viewers who are lovers of Ahl al-Bayt salawatullahi wa salam alayhi ajma'in we are approaching the and days of month of Ramadan actually as I have been noticed uh, <coughs> the tomorrow is the final day of the month of Ramadan and in this way month of Ramadan will be 30 days and the day after tomorrow inshallah it's the Eid al-Fitr which all the mu'min in the mu'minat those who fasted in this month will celebrate it and they will wait Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his precious gifts inshallah so starting by this I would like to invite all of you dear brothers and sisters to perform ziyarah of Imam Hussain alayhi salam although you are far from Karbala but as long as the show is broadcasting live you can join me and say salam to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Abdul Abbas alayhi salam and be za'ir of Imam Hussain alayhi salam in this last night if we can say the, the night of the last day of the month of Ramadan so you also be za'ir of Imam Hussain alayhi salam just join me and let's all together say humble salam to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Abdul Abbas alayhi salam السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين أو أبا عبد الله one month next to your holy shrine we were trying to get more information about your value about the value of all the infallible imams and you had us here your hospitality in Karbala was great and is great please accept the salam from all the respected viewers for watching this show right now and performing this ziyarah. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's all together say humble salam to Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. Saqdi al Utasha. Assalamu alayka ya Babu al Hawaij ila Allah. Assalamu alayka ya Qamar bani Hashim. Assalamu alayka ya Abu al Fadl al Abbas wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Once again, Once assalamu alaykum ya Aba Abdullah. I think that I have got an echo into my ear. So I hope if the control room just can check it. Dear brothers and sisters, respected viewers, once again, I would like to say that I'm very honored being here in this holy land and serving Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salamu alayhi majma'in and serving you, dear brothers and sisters. And I'm, I really appreciate and thank you for your great messages, your great thanks and du'as that you do for me and my colleagues. Inshallah, one day we can have you here in Karbala and all together perform Ziyarah of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and go to the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. As you know, in these nights we are used to talking about the greatness of Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salamu alayhi majma'in. But what we are talking about is not what we are thinking and it's not the source of what we are talking about is not just our imagination. What, whatever we're talking about has got a source and the source of what we are having these nights as a lecture and as a conversation is based on the most comprehensive form of ziyarah called Ziyarat al jamaa which has been revealed and recited by Imam Ali al-Hadi alayhi salam the 10th infallible Imam who gave us a very great point of view and idea about how great and how valuable Imam is. And this night also we are welcoming respected guest Sheikh Mustafa Ahund who has prepared another lecture for us so we are going to get more information about Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salam alayhim ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna and I would like to welcome you once again to this show. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah to you brother Mustafa and also all the viewers of Imam Hussein TV3 asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most important dua and that is for him to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi Allah ta'ala farajwa sharif and granting us to be amongst his companions and yeah. his sincere soldiers and for to grant all the viewers inshallah the visitation of the shrines of Ahlul Bayt as soon as possible I'm at your service well, thank you so much Shaykh. inshallah almighty accepts what we are doing and inshallah. what we are having these nights and it be uh, as it's said the uh, khira and reserve for the first night of our um, Grave. when we are pass passing away and our grave inshallah because actually in that time nothing is useful except our deeds Definitely. and the ones whose deeds are uh, in the path of Ahlul Bayt indeed he will win the game of this world because in the Holy Quran it says that in the dunya la'ibun wa it's all a game it's all just a play if you don't pay attention to it but if you pay attention to it and if you follow the infallibles then you will be succeed inshallah in both inshallah. in this world and hereafter so as the other night this night also we are waiting for you to give us a great lecture of what we are uh, going to learn about the most compressive form of ziyarah inshallah inshallah well, we're still discussing the word, the phrase, what tamina, sorry, wal mukhlasina fi tawheed Allah. The one that are sincere in prophesying Allah's oneness. As we mentioned in the previous nights, and since tonight will be our last night that we are going to have this show, uh, and we'll see, inshallah, when we can continue discuss this beautiful ziyara, uh, I thought to just wrap it up around tawheed and some sayings and narrations from the lives of our Imams so we can appreciate what they have left behind for us. They are the most sincere in prophesying Allah's oneness. If it wasn't because of their worship, we wouldn't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it wasn't because of their existence, we wouldn't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the one who taught us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see this within a beautiful hadith by Amir al Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Before that, another hadith, Imam Salah alayhi salam says, 
Abad Thalatha Tuqawman. Abad, those people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, categorize within three categories. Qawmun Abadullah Azza wa Jal Khawfan Fatilka Ibadatul Abid. People, one, one group of people worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a fear. They are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way a servant worships and the, ser the way servant obeys his master. That is, again, one way of worshiping. Qawmun Abadullah Tabaraka wa ta'ala and a group of people also worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as ujara, as the ones who uh, want a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They treat Allah as a business. I mean, this way of worship is a business. I'll do something and I'll get something in return. So the beginning, the first, was when they are afraid of their master, slave. The second way of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that I'll do something and I'm doing it for a reward. That's a business. It's a give and take. وَقَوْمٌ عَبَدُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ حُبًّا لَهُ فَتِلْكَ عِبَادَةُ الْأَحْرَارِ وَهِيَ أَفْضَلُ الْعِبَادَةِ The first two way of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is way of worshiping. But the third one is the best. How? Those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they have they fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the way a free man will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam says this third one is the best way of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imams of Ahl-Bayt again they are teaching us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith as we were about to discuss it, قال علي عليه السلام ما عبدتك خوفا من نارك Allah, I did not worship you because of fear of your hellfire. ولا شوقا إلى جنتك. Not, and I'm not worshiping you because I want to uh, get to your heaven and get a reward. بل وجدتك أهلا لعبادتك لعبادتك فعبدتك. I saw you to be worthy of worshiping you, and I worshipped you. So these two are giving us a perspective of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. in a very detailed way of worshiping that neither for as a fear nor for a reward but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I was telling my children teaching them how to appreciate and the reason why we pray I say that if you are a photographer and you really, really love photography person comes and give you about $10,000 $10, camera as a gift and they tell you this is your gift will only one thanking him will be sufficient to just say thank you I appreciate it or every time that you see him and every time that you use this camera you will appreciate him and you are grateful to him because of this very very expensive uh, camera that he has given you so they tell me, okay, so dad, where are you trying to take us with? I told them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you two cameras, two eyes that doesn't need color correction. You already can differentiate between the colors. Yeah. Doesn't need uh, manually for you to focus it automatically. It focuses. When you go to the dark, it goes, your pupil enlarges. And then when you go in light, the opposite. Allah has given you something that you are not aware of it. These two eyes that you can see and many benefits. Your tongue, your ears, your nose, your hair, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, your life, your existence. This is what we learn from the teachings of Muhammad and Muhammad and the Holy Quran. We go to the next phrase. Assalamu ala al-a'immatu dua Peace be upon the Imams, the heralds, or the advocates. Previously, the beginning of the ziyarah, we read this phrase phrase assalamu ala dua ila Allah peace be upon the callers to Allah in here Imam Hadi alayhi salam is saying assalamu ala al-a'immatu duaat those who advocate those who are uh, the heralds meaning there is no qaid there is no limitation that you are the one that call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no you are the one who advocates you are the one who calls and summons because, and this is called absolute, 
مقيد and مطلق مطلق means absolute some people only think of the religion of Islam to be only shaping our spirituality and everything that has to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the religion of Islam has nothing to do with our day-to-day -day lives and activities our politics, our economical aspect, our socio aspect, our psychological aspect, every other aspect. Islam is only about salah, zakat, khawm, khums, saum, hajj, and so on and so forth. These ten furu'adeen, that's what only Islam is about. And when we read As-Salaamu ala, ala du'at ilallah, basically they come and they limit that Ahl Bayt are there only to teach us about ahkam, the spirituality, spirituality, only them, furu ad deen mm -hmm. and that's it. Rather, in this phrase, it becomes absolute. You are the one who advocates and call toward what? Toward everything that we are doing and how can we be perfect in it. For example, so, and everything can have sabghatullah. Every action of us can have the color and the brand name and the logo of Allah on it. Who shows us how? Ahl al-Bayt My driving, my walking, my writing, my reading, my interaction with my family, my interaction with my colleagues, with my friends, with my relatives, with a stranger, with a needy person. Everything can have sabghatullah. It can have the logo of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it can have a brand name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on it. Again, who shows us? None but Ahlul Bayt alayhim wassalam. They show us how this can happen. I'll read some examples. For example, Dua Makaram al Akhlaq. By Imam Zayn Abidin alayhi salam, it's an amazing dua for anybody who wants to reach highest level of morality and demeanor and akhlaq. I was blessed for two months of Ramadan, two holy months of Ramadan, to give interpretation of it. MashaAllah. 60 nights. We haven't finished, we can, I can say more than half of it I just covered. In 60 nights, every night, like the same thing that we do with Ziyarah Jama'ah, yeah. I used to take a phrase from, starting from the beginning, and continue. So 60 nights we were not finished. How Imam Zayn Abidin alayhi salam with this dua, in the form of dua, teaches us how to re to interact with other people. Starts with Iman, starts with sincerity, uh, certainty, and it continues how our A'mal should be. Beautifully, it describes for us our behavior. Next, 51 treaties of rights, Rasalat al Hukuk by Imam Zayn Abidin alayhi salam. How again Imam shows the, the, within our own body, our eyes right upon us, yeah. our nose, our ears, our tongue, our hand, our legs, our stomach, our private part, every part of our body has rights upon us. Our children have right upon us. We have responsibility toward our parents. Husband to wife, wife to husband, your neighbor, masjid, Quran, everything that you see within this 51 treaties, basically 51 treaties, 51 rights upon your shoulder that we must know and we must act upon it. And uh, as when uh, one time I was going through these uh, sentences about the Rasad al Ahkam of uh, Rasad al Hukuk, the right Rasad of uh, the Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, I noticed that although uh, these sentences are short, it's not a very long, uh, you know, talking or speaking uh, sentences or, you know, uh, writing. A pad, but uh, half a page. It's very, yeah, it's very half a page and it's very brief, but it covers yes. everything. Yes. And this is the great and beautiful point in it. Uh, I just want to add that, subhanAllah, the uh, talkings and speakings of Ahlul Bayt salawatullah wa salam alayhi wa salam and whatever we have received from them are just like treasures non-ending treasures the more we get deep into them the more we dig them we get more treasure we get of more course, great definitely. and valuable things from them and we learn more from them exactly uh, just like what we are doing these nights with the uh, ziyarat at jama'a and mashallah we are not finishing it of course we only have gone through several uh, phrases yes but we still got a lot to talk about you mentioned a good point if we dig into them so right now i had when I searched before the holy month of Ramadan, I was preparing sources for the ziyarah 
I read about five sources that I have that I use and the Holy Quran and the interpreters of Ziyarah Jam al Kabir, and then I come up with the lecture. Then I kept searching. There are another 10 interpretations, and each one of these five that I read, each one of them have different taste, different perspective that they see the phrase. Some of them are touching the surface of the Ziyarah Jam al Kabir. Yeah. Some of them they go, some were deeper, some go much, much deeper. Then I see how much, again, words of Imam can have meanings and we can drive from them benefits and as you mentioned gems that can benefit us Masha. but if I go to a mountain not knowing not having the tools to dig in and take gold out I just go and I just climb the mountain and I come down and that's that's how much benefit I get yeah. but if I have enough tools if I have the right tools and I can identify where the golds are dig get gold I will benefit more from just climbing the mountain and coming down yeah definitely so Treat is right. I was exa uh, I gave example of it that Imam Zayn Abidin says that you should treat your wife the way the akrimha, honor her. People, group of people, ask me, what, do you, what does Imam mean? I say, treat her as a guest. A husband must treat his wife as a guest because the guest we honor them. Yeah. Akrim when we akrim al ulama honor the ulama, the scholars. Akram, honor X, Y, Z. So Imam says, you as a husband, you have to honor her. How? So they say, okay, make it more tangible. I say, for example, when a guest comes to your house, do you tell the guest to go wash the dishes? No. Definitely not. Do you tell them to pick up after themselves? No. You serve them. Yeah. If a husband has this mindset, same thing for the mm -hmm. wife. If she has this mindset, the word divorce won't, won't have any won't, more meaning in this kind of relationship. Yeah, it doesn't exist in this dictionary for these couples when they both honor one another and treat one another with honor and dignity. Again, we can go, Rasalat uh, al needs, each, each of those treaties needs one month. So 51 month of Ramadan, Masha, or inshallah. we need to discuss about that. I'm just giving some uh, points about it. Or for example, so, Dua makaram al akhlaq as far as uh, moralities and demeanors. Rasalat al huquq, rights and responsibilities. We come Malik al Ashtar. They are real, I'm sorry, Chef, they are really treasures. I really hope, and inshallah, maybe uh, we can speak with the management of Imam Hussain TV channel so we can continue this kind of and meetings and discussions inshallah here in this land land of inshallah. Karbala and if you're ready here in Karbala although I know that you are uh, you have to go to the US and sometimes you come back if it's okay with you even though we can have Skype uh, connections or talking so we can continue these great uh, conversations inshallah so um, we first of all I just like to um, have more information about these great things Inshallah. for myself and then I'm sure that the respected viewers also would like to know more about these great things that have been taught taught about uh, by Ahlul Bayt Salatullah There is a discussion and Inshallah we might continue with Inshallah. the Jama'a Al-Kabira every Thursday night mm. Inshallah or we have a discussion we'll see if Ahlul Bayt bless us and give us tawfiq Inshallah. we might continue that every Thursday night so we can Inshallah, Inshallah after a year honor. or two we can finish this ziyara Inshallah that's a great honor Another example that Ahl Bayt they are a du'at, a'immatu du'at, they are the heralds, they are the advocates, not necessarily only just come pray, we go to them when we need to know how to pray, we need to go to them when we need to fast, we need to go, and unfortunately we see this within our society. Scholars are only approached about salah, zakat, khums, hajj, and these are through ad deen only, and aqaid. But when we see the scholars' responsibility are to teach and educate people about morality, about demeanors, about the rights of uh, 51 rights of Imam Zayn al-Abideen, letter, letter of Imam Ali Salam to Malik al-Ashtar, how to govern. It's a complete manifesto of governing from Amir Mu'min Ali Salam to Malik al-Ashtar. It might be a page or two, not max, but each phrase of that letter can be a big, help and can aid a person who wants to govern according again to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the tongue of the Amir Mu'min, tongue of Amir Mu'min Ali ibn Abi Talib So I brought some 
a hadith to show us that each of the hadith and narrations that we read in addition to the verses of the Holy Quran it's giving us a perspective it's giving us a way of life it's not that only we read a hadith mashallah beautiful hadith and we move on no we will have to see this verse or this hadith from Ahl Bayt salam, how it's shaping our mindset how it's shaping our personality how it's shaping our demeanor and characteristics what is trying to do with us is it only just reading and moving on or no for example when i read this rasat al huquq by imam zain abidin and i see that his spouse must honor her, his spouse well that is showing me that my society is giving me a perspective of how i should treat my wife but imams of ahl bayt alayhim salam they are also teaching me this is the way that you have to treat your spouse this is the perspective you must have so i read a couple of hadith based on time inshallah we read and say the shaham qal qultu la abi abdullah إني سمعتك تقول نية المؤمن خير من عمله. The person asks Imam Sadiq عليه السلام that I heard you, Imam, you say that the intention of the believer is better than his action. فكيف تكون النية خيرا من العمل؟ How can intention be better than the deed itself? قال لأن العمل ربما كان رياء للمخلوقين. والنية خالصة لرب العالمين فيعطي تعالى على النية ما لا يعطي على العمل الله Beautifully Again when I tell people it's easy to go to heaven but we work hard to go to hellfire This is one of the hadith that I rely my argument on Sure And it's giving us beautiful perspective He asked how can the intention be better than the deed Imam says it might be that the deeds that you do, you are trying to show off to other people. You are trying, you are waiting for people to say, MashaAllah, good job, thank you, pat, pat on the back. And that appreciation makes you, okay, Alhamdulillah, I did something. So that boost of the energy shouldn't be there. Right away, we have to say, Hadam and Fadl Rabbi. This is all from the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has nothing to do with me. These lectures that I'm preparing in here has nothing to do for me. It's all the narrations of Ahl Bayt which beautifies it, and the verses of the Holy Quran, and the stories of the lives of Ahl Bayt If not, our words doesn't have any meaning if it was without the teachings of Muhammad Ali Muhammad and the Holy Quran. So that gives us a perspective. Meaning is what? Even though if I don't have money to give, let me make intention. Yeah. That I, when I see a needy person, I have a little bit, maybe I have a dollar. Let me just give that dollar. Mm -hmm. I wish, my, my intention, I wish I had $1,000, I can help this needy person. When I see an orphan walking barefoot, I wish I had money, I can buy a pair of shoes for him. Maybe if I don't have money myself, and I'm just surviving on basic necessity. I see a big land. I wish I have money to build a big Husseiniyah, big Imam Barga here, big school we need. Shia school in every state within the United States. In every province in Canada, we need a Shia school. In every state within UK, we need Shia school. We need Islamic schools. I wish I had money so I can build schools. I wish I had money, so it's intention. Yeah. I wish I had money so I can publish books about the lives of Ahl Bayt in English and spread it through all the people in, for example, the United States. The individual has done nothing, only an intention, intention. in his mind. But Allah is going to and reward him. rewarding him even more than the, do, the deed if he does it. Definitely. Allah says, I mean, Imam says, when Your intention is pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're wishing that you had it. Allah probably, for, so for example, if your intention of building a school, when you walk by a beautiful building, I wish I had a school, uh, money, I can buy this and make an Islamic school, I can make hospital for needy people, I can, for example, buy houses in Iraq and give it to the needy and orphans that I don't have. We have millions of orphans, thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of widows, they don't have place to, to live. I wish I had money that I can do that. So imagine this wish, for example, has one million reward just to make it tangible. Yeah. Doing it, Imam says, Ma la yu'ti ala al Maybe by doing it, you only get 500,000 reward. Doesn't mean that I'm gonna just make intention and do, don't act upon it. No, do the intention, get million, 
and be uh, and act upon it and get that ha- half a million. I mean, be have serious to be, on it, not yeah, just saying. Of course, Allah will test. Yeah, Allah will test with letter that you have. If you give, Allah gives you more, so you can give more. You have money. You see a person, needy person. I wish I had money so I can help thousand people. But you have money right now. You can just do it. You don't have money to pay thousand people. At least help one individual. That yeah. matters. At least help. And then Allah right. gives you more help. Two individual, mm. five, ten people, and then increase. Qala Abu Abdullah, beautiful hadith. Again, how beautifully changes our perspective in this world that by me just making intention, I can have my reward. Qala Abu Abdullah, Inna al-abd la yanwi min nahari an yusalli bil-layl. Abd, a servant of Allah, makes an intention mm-hmm. that at night time, after I go sleep, before Salat al-Subh, to wake up and to pray Salat al-Layl. Yeah. The 11th rak'ah. Fataghlibuhu aynuhu fayanamu. He goes to sleep, but sleep overcomes him. He won't be able to get up. He puts the alarm, but he was so tired and he snoozes it and he goes off. He sleeps. Fayuthbitu Allah lahu salatahu. ويكتب نفس نفسه تسبيحا ويجعل نومه عليه صدقه سبحان الله he made an intention to wake up in the middle of the night and pray salat al-layl he slept he didn't pray salat al-layl he woke up he found out it's salat al-subh imam says allah will write for him salat al-layl the reward he didn't do it yeah, but, but the intention the he will write the thawab of it ويكتب نف- نفسه تسبيحا while he's sleeping Every breathe, inhale Every and inhale outside. and exhale, subhanAllah, is, is the thawab of subhanAllah. La ilaha illallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa akbar is written for him. وَيَجْعَلُ نَوْمَهُ عَلَيْهِ صَدَقَةً While he's sleeping, this six hours, five hours, eight hours of sleep is written for him, thawab of sadaqah, with one intention. Allah Akbar. So shouldn't since I wake up, so but I had the intention and I did something. Yep. Not that I have the intention, I see the class, I don't put it, I just want to sleep. No, I try my best, intention counts. That I won't lose hope anymore. Mm-hmm. That okay, I was trying to do good, but I didn't get it. You just made the intention. Allah gave you the reward. That's it. Work, strive. If you were not able to fulfill it, Allah gave you the reward completely. So action plan will be. All of us, let me just make intention. Wow. I want to be one of the companions of Imam Al Mahdi Ajra Allah Ta'ala Farjah Shaykh. 313. That's the intention. Number one. I will try to be pious, I will do my best, I will read about him, I will advocate about him, I will promote people to know about him, I will educate people to know about him, I will post Facebook posts, I will put uh, Instagram picture, I will do whatever it is to not pe- let people know, as much as possible, whatever I have in my hand. Um, if I die, and I was one of those people who waited, and I wanted to be, Imam says, Allah will write him to be one of those 313, even though he didn't see the Imam, and even though he was not martyred between the hand of the Imam, Allah will write him as one of the martyrs between the hand of Imam al-Mahdi, even though he didn't see the Imam. Indeed, heaven is for free. It is. Just the intention. Allah. And I act upon it. I act upon it. Again, what do you mean free? Free, Allah's salah, free. Yeah. We pay nothing. You go all over the place. If you have extra money, you're not afraid of losing it. There's all of the conditions Maybe of becoming Muslim. Pay some, some sadaqah. We help needy people. So it's not that the we are giving. People, yeah. You want to travel everywhere, go to Hajj also, see people. That's a good. Also, you can meet with people, socialize with people. Yeah, we do lots of the trips and travel to uh, different countries every year. Add so to it. one of them can be. Once, a hajj. if you have, if you are not Mustati, don't worry about it. Yeah. Zakat. Exceeding, you have 40 sheep, give one sheep for the sake of Allah. You have 40 of them, give one sheep. Khums, if you exceed money, you paid all of your taxes, you paid all of your money, you paid all of your dues, rent, you have just 20%. So it's basically free, fasting free. But we pay to go to hellfire. In comparison with all those blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, it's indeed free, even though if we just pay some money for sadaqah, and that, that also returns to us, the benefit of the sadaqah also Definitely. returns to us. But uh, when someone counts, you know, just one plus one equals two, and just by counting this Relatively, kind of, proportion yeah, wise, really nothing. Free. But for hellfire, for jahannam, uh, may Allah keep us away from it, inshallah. inshallah. It's all costs money. Yes. Some uh, people need to uh, spend money to go yes. to hell. 
yes. for uh, buying some uh, beverages, I don't know, for just doing something bad, for buying yes. guns and killing the others. You know, these all need effort and money, yes. and you know, and finally they end up in hellfire. Ha hell so, in addition to that, again, intention. Yeah. And intention this doesn't have any yes. effort anymore. Like, I do put the alarm, and mom says again, from, ever, from today, I put the alarm, I want to wake up, and I'm sincere about it. Allah knows my intention. Sure. Allah is closer to us than our juggler vein. So he knows our intention. I want to wake up in the middle of the night. Before I go to sleep, I just do wudu and I go. If I slept and I didn't wake up, thawab of salah is written for me. My inhale and exhale has been tasbih for me. Allah makes my sleep sadaqah. What else do I want? So that's the perspective. When we say, assalamu ala a'immatu dua the advocate, this is what we learn about everything they're giving us perspective. Another hadith. Where Imam says, An Abil Hassan Rada alayhi salam. La yakunum al mu'minu mu'minan hatta yakunu fihi thalatu khisar. A mu'min, a believer, is not a believer until has, he has three characteristics. Sunnatun min rabbi, wa sunnatun min nabiyyeh, wa sunnatun min waliyyeh. He has a characteristics from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a godly characteristics, a prophetic characteristics and wali characteristics, and imam characteristics. فَأَمَّا السُنَّةُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ The godly characteristics that he must have. فَكِتْمَانُ sir. If he sees someone's secret, if somebody told him his secret, he hides it. وَأَمَّا السُنَّةُ مِنْ نَبِيِّهِ فَمُدَارَاتُ النَّاسِ He deals with people with forbearance. He tries to bring people together. He forgives people. He tries to always be that lenient person that he goes with everybody as satisfied and happy and he tries to work with people. And characteristics from Imam that we have to learn, being patient at the time of difficulties and challenge and their tributes. Allahu Akbar. And we really see that during the life the precious life of Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salamu alayhi majma'in, they really bear lots of hardships, lots of uh, tortures, True. and you know, those uh, bad behaviors from the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala toward them, and they all just waited in sake of Allah. Of they buried it, they just uh, said, Wama amri illa Allah, illa lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this way, they taught us how to be calm and satisfied by Allah satisfaction satisfaction uh, whatever happens to us true and we see each of the Imams what they went through that's a very beautiful example for us I have more hadith I don't know we have time I have five six more hadith but I don't think we, we have, have I think that we've got four minutes for okay minutes good left, yeah. this hadith all of them in each one of them are beautiful anybody who speaks a lot mm -hmm. his mistakes will increase وَمَنْ كَثَرَ وَمَنْ كَثُرَ خَطَأُهُ قَلَّ حَيَاؤُهُ Anybody whose mistakes increases, his modesty decreases. وَمَنْ قَلَّ حَيَاؤُهُ قَلَّ وَرَعَهُ Whose his modesty decreases, his uh, piety also decreases. وَمَنْ قَلَّ وَرَعَهُ مَا تَقَلْبُهُ Whose piety decreases, his heart dies. وَمَنْ مَا تَقَلْبُهُ دَخَلَ النَّارِ and anybody whose heart dies, he will enter hellfire. Why? Again, perspective. My heart dies. Allah sends single signals. I don't see it. Basically, this mirror that's supposed to reflect the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely dark black and, dark. and blackened. How, how did it get to this place? Perspective. Let's talk. There is a hadith. At least, at least I can bring 35 to 40 hadith about speaking little as much as needed and we see within the lives of the imam short sweet simple Shana, does it does it apply to our daily life everywhere or talking or it's a, or it's about talking about the religious things that thanks of that we don't have any idea about it and we just open our mouths and talk about everything man kalamuhu in everything if it's something that benefits me or benefits the one audience well, good. I'm giving lecture 45 minutes. Yeah. But after the lectures, we're sitting home. We're just talking with friends. Let's just chit chat. Mm -hmm. Let's just get together and just have a coffee. Okay, when we have a coffee, good. But we talk. A good conversation will last 
10, 15, 20 minutes, we have some good things to say, yeah. either business some or family issues. Okay. After that, gossip comes in the middle, mm -hmm. accusation comes in the middle, and increases. To a lot of things, haram comes, but we don't have nothing else to say. Yeah. So, Imam says, speak less. Reduce. Your modesty won't decrease. Your piety won't decrease. Your heart won't die. And you will end up in hell, he heaven. Why just keep talking and just for sake of conversation? There's more hadith. Allah. We need for thank you. Time. Thank you so much, Sheikh. That was great. And I'm really thankful, that, first of all, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Abu Abdullah Hussain alayhi salam, as for his hospitality, for being next to the Holy Shana of Allah. Islam, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm definitely sure that being in this great place, it lets, uh, it, it, it let us, it lets us uh, be able and uh, energetic to talk about al and Islam. these great things. Just let's imagine that we are just away from this great place. Maybe we can also talk about a little bit, but being next to the Holy Shana of Islam, this means a lot. And uh, finally, I would like to thank you, Sheikh. Thank you. During this great month, you honor. gave us great lectures. An you honor. talked about the great and precious and valuable All the of phrases. Allah, thank you so much. And inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you Everybody with this you. great service that you are, I'm, I'm sure that you are honored with it, that you are serving Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salam alayhim ajma'in. And inshallah, Allah increases the Ajmain, amount of blessings that of you are honored with, inshallah. Thanks, Imam Hussain TV3 which gave me this opportunity and thank you for hosting us. May Allah bless okay. you and bless all it's the people honor. who are watching us, who sponsor the programs and who donate and who bear with us for a whole month. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, thank you. Inshallah, in the next days, as you said, maybe on Thursdays or maybe in another kind of schedule, you know, inshallah. we can be, inshallah, at your service and we so continue fine. this discussion, inshallah. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, respected viewers, I'm really happy for serving you. You are my dear brothers and sisters, indeed. And you know that during the Welcome to Kerbala live show, live ziyara show, we have a lot to say. And we just perform ziyara and say salam to Imam Fasir alayhi salam and I receive your beautiful messages, salams, du'a, salutations. And that is very great. That is very nice. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us this great opportunity of serving Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salam alayhi wa ajma'in and serving you respected brothers and sisters who deserve this. You deserve being Za'al of Imam Hussain alayhi salam because you are spending time, you are uh, having a schedule for being with Imam Hussain alayhi salam so you deserve all the great things and you all deserve the heaven inshallah during all the teachings that we have learned from the Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salam alayhi wa ajma'in in these lectures. Anyway, I would like to thank you once again, and I would like to pre-congratulate uh, pre you for the Eid al-Fitr, although tomorrow is the 13th of Ramadan, but after that, inshallah, it is Eid al-Fitr, so don't forget to pray for us, and we will be your representative here next to Holy Shana from Hussain alayhi salam. Have a great night. May Allah bless you all, and Ya Hussain. Mm-hmm.